Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome back to Tokyo Mode. Alright, so it is putrid hot out here. It's been raining on and off. It's disgusting. I'm sweating my ring out. But, I've decided I'm going to just send the 3.7 diff and see how it goes. It might be sick. I might get awesome bakes around turn 6 at QR. It might be terrible. So, I'm just going to send it. I'm going to go into a little bit of detail for chucking the mini spool in that center. It's a lot more reliable to do it this way if you've got the option. 89 bucks off eBay, 28 spline, W78 Bob Warner mini spool. Done, easy, get that. Skids. Alright, I'm gonna get this hat off, make sure there's nothing fucky going on in there, get that center out, and we can start transferring the mini spool center from the old diff, which the center is kind of all chewed up from pieces of gear floating around in there. So we'll gut that and then slap it all into this one. But I'll go into a bit more detail as we go through for this video, so yeah. Bear with me, we'll be back. <laughs> now that I've gotten the hat off and everything, when, when you're pulling these apart, what I'm gonna do is I'll undo these four bolts here that hold the two caps in. I'll leave them just on loose so that I can get a pry bar in there and pry the diff out towards me without it just wanting to drop. But when you're pulling them out, make sure you keep the shims because there'll be shim out of bearing race and then you'll have your cap. Keep all them together and remember what way that shim is facing and keep them with each side because that's what's used when they set the clearances in here. So if this shim's say thicker than this shim, and you swap them, then you're pushing the whole center slightly this way, which makes your clearances tighter, which could cause binding, breaking of gears, all that sort of stuff, excessive wear. So just, I know sometimes it's not an option, like you've had to put a different center into your car for whatever reason, like I had to with my old diff. I winged it and it worked out fine. But just remember to try and match the shims to the housing and remember what side they come from and you shouldn't have an issue with having to go get everything clearance. Because I'm all about doing shit myself and not having to pay a shop to do it for me. So, just remember where everything goes. Got both centers out. This is the one with the spool in it, this is the one without. But I've got to, obviously I've got to get both apart if we want to do the switch and make everything work all good and happy. We got eight left hand thread bolts that are five eighths. They're gonna be very tight. Especially if you can't find an impact socket, make sure you at least have a six sided hex socket, not not a multi-point or you're gonna strip them whether you use a rattle gun or chuck it in the vise which if this doesn't want to get them easy rather than risk stripping them i will chuck it in a vise and then get it with the breaker bar but for now this point this is where you find out whether your diff has been doing single peggers for the last fucking two years or whether it's being baby by a grandpa. The gears inside here are not meant to have all the stresses of the motor screaming them doing the work. It's meant to be both wheels are spinning pretty well at the same rate like highway drive. But if you're all there just cooking a pegger out at the side of the local McDonald's or something like that, these gears are gonna get hot. They don't have bearings. They're just in there sitting on the pins, which are there that run through. And when those pins get too hot, the spider gears fuse to the pins. You can't push it out if it's welded to the spider gear. So my last center, which is this one, had that issue because I've been flogging it on open diff for too long. We had to take it to a machine shop and he turned the pins to liquid. Thankfully I had the pins left over from 
another diff I had and was able to fix it, but they had to turn the pins to liquid and you need these big pins. If that does happen, it probably is easier to just get it welded, to be honest. I've got four and a half mil pin punch, which getting yourself a good set of punches is probably a good idea regardless. So I got both centers split. It was just a matter of getting like a cold chisel in between them, just giving them a couple of good whacks and eventually just prize them apart. Grab one of your larger punch if you've got a set, otherwise any sort of piece of metal should work. And go for the larger pin first, which the large pin runs straight through the middle of one and then you've got two little pins and that's what's sort of holding your spy gear, spider gears in. Once you got those little locating pins out, these should come out fairly easy unless, as I said before, you've welded your spider gears to the pins by accident. Don't stress if it's got scoring in here, as long as that pin goes in and out freely, because you don't need anything to spin on it after this. Now you got one gear out, and then that pin's in the center there, which is just should slide out nice and easy. All this stuff in here should be clearanced in a way that lets it spin. So, those gears out. Now we've still got the pin in this one. Now it's gonna be easier to punch it back through this way because we can get the leverage on it. Whatever you're bracing your thing against, try not to mash your bearing. All those gears, I don't know, weld them together and make something pretty out of them. Now, your center gear that just sits in there, it just kind of floats. Just pop that out. You don't need that anymore either. You'll have a little, sort of like a bearing shim. A smooth surface fighter gears to spin against, which I've got them all out now. Whew, it is hot. And also pop the front one out. That one, don't need it either. Those are the gears that you weld together when you weld the diff, which you don't pull it apart like this to do that. It's literally just bang. You got three circles in the center, and as you can see, it kind of splines there, just like what your gears would, but it's a solid chunk of metal. It's like welding it, but better. You just slot it in, lining it up with your four holes, like it was, and it should kind of move around in there fairly freely. Now making sure that for your pins, you, see, you got your little holes that your little locator dowels, these ones, go through. Make sure that they're lined up sitting upright so that the dowels go through nice and easy and you don't bend them and fuck them up all on the way in. Because we'll do the big pin first and then we can knock the little pins in and it'll stop us from knocking the little pins in too far. Don't do what I nearly just did. For your big pin, you've only got one hole in it. So make sure you put it through the right way, say you're having to punch it back out again. Don't make the mistake that I just made, so I had to punch all my pins back out again. When you look at the face of it, you got three holes. Your big pin goes through the side that only has one hole and your little pins go on the either side of it. What I just did was punch it through like that and then wondered why there was no hole for the pin to go through that one. Really, being a mini spool, there's no moving parts on the inside and this, these are held in by the crown gear anyway. You probably don't need to put the little locking pins in. But for the sake of I'm in here, I may as well just chuck them back in. I'm gonna do it. Big pin goes through the channel that only has one hole. Make sure your center's nice and lined up. It'll make it go through easier. Oh, that's a little bit off. lined up it should be just below the surface should be flush enough for that pin yep done a 
letter. Ah, uh, I don't like letters. Is it a fine? Yeah, driver's license will be expired on the 10th of next month. Right. Right, once you've got your big pins through and the space for your little pins is lined up, line up the bolt holes carefully for where your crown gear goes through. And I would even recommend dropping through a few bolts to guarantee that it's going to stay lined up as you drop, as you knock it into place. Being very gentle not to crack the housing. You just want to get it started and then once you put your gear up while it's lined up then you can pull it all tight together using the bolts actually on the gear. See I'm using a towel there so I don't damage any of the gears tapping it down that little bit. And hopefully you can tap it down just enough gently to get those bolts to contact, which they're not. Alright, I've got it pretty close all the way on now. Set your rattle gun to undo, because that will warm up. Work your way around till the gear comes up and sits nice and flush. Which, this is why you don't use chrome sockets. If you can avoid it, I've just stripped that one out. For your pins, you just do the reverse what you did to get them out. Put them back in the hole, not going the opposite way. Lock my hands. Now that is a locked mini spool diff center. Easy. Not too hard at all. Alright, it gets a little bit more fiddly for actually getting the diff back up in there properly. So, get your two bearing races. Place it on the ends, make sure you got your shims, which you've kept on the right side. See the, the flatter edge, not the tapered edge, the flatter edge goes to the face of your bearing race. A little hard to get both braces, shims and the centre up in there at the same time. Cap started. Like most things, make sure not to over torque one bolt before you get started on the other. There's a lock center. Get yourself a fresh gasket, slap that bitch on, that fucking housing. Is it there? Just there. Just slap that bitch on, and she's done. What was that? Bye. And for the rest of it, really, it's just reversing the steps of pulling it apart, chucking your axles back in, your brakes back on. Pop your oil up to that fill point. Pretty simple. Took me about an hour and a half to do changing all the stuff in the center, which considering I was filming and trying to make a video out of it, it's not bad. It's really not too time consuming. Allow yourself a day, you'll have the car apart, back together, no problem at all. I'm not gonna keep this for much longer, but if you enjoyed this video and you got value out of it and it helped you out, leave a like, it goes a long way towards supporting the channel and also kind of shows me that my content is doing good and that this video has actually been helpful and done what it's meant to do.
But if you're new to the channel and you've just popped up for this video, consider subscribing or checking out my other videos. I'll link some in the description. There'll be a couple of cards here at the end. You do you. If you enjoy the other content, awesome and welcome to the channel. But anyways, not gonna keep you for much longer. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for watching the video. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. <laughs> anyways, anyways. Thanks again. See you on the next one. <laughs>